Hello everyone, it's Magic here, and last week Sony announced the new Sony a7R5, which is kind of this all-around camera, like all-in-one camera, but I don't think, if you remember, Sony already have all-in-one camera. Sony do have the Alpha One camera, the one to rule them all, the, the one. So since I've had both of them for tests here, I did some comparisons and I do have some thoughts and I'm going to divide this video into three parts. So the first part will be like the body differences and like, you know, the, the build differences. The second one will be differences that I believe are just a software firmware update away from Sony A1. And the third one is going to be the actual performance differences that I believe are the differences of the technologies used in these two cameras. Okay, so fasten your seat belts and prepare for a lot of information. Also, subscribe to the channel. If you're a Sony boy, I'm a Sony boy. I'm your Sony boy. I'm a photographer. Photographers using Sony, subscribe. Okay, so starting with the body differences, like th these are easy to spot. So A1 has an additional dial on the left side to choose between modes and high-speed shooting. It's just like A9 or A9 Mark II. There's a different layout um, of the buttons. The record button is on the back, the C1 and the C2 are on the top. So this is like the old layout. There's exposure compensation dial that is just an exposure compensation dial and the video mode is on the mode dial. A7R5 introduces the newest design that was firstly introduced with a 7 IV. So the dial on the right side, it's not just exposure compensation dial, it's just a dial that you can customize from the menu, the C1, button is moved on the back so the record button is on the top and then you have that beautiful switch or like photo and video mode that is just like underneath the mode dial so now you can just switch from photo to video and still have the mode dial to change from manual to aperture priority or shutter priority whatever you want. Ports on the left are quite similar with the change that A1 has this Ethernet port for like a fast transfer of data so if you are like a sports or event photographer working on a clock on a stadium like you need that the third part just to move your files quickly and then also a7r5 has this multi usb interface port that is probably mainly for like the old kind of interface components that just uses this to data transfer on the other side we do have the same slot for the memory card so we have like a dual dual card slot for sd and cf type a fast cards and then we do have a screen and a viewfinder so the screen on the a7r5 we have a new screen it's bigger it's 3.2 inch it's high resolution and then it does move differently you can frame your vertical photos better as well so like overall the screen is better on a7r5 the viewfinders this is actually interesting because like the technology of the viewfinder this is the exact same viewfinder so it has like beautiful 9.44 million dots or whatever the resolution is but funny thing on a7r5 you have this option to have the higher quality of the image when you are taking photos so that's nice but on the other hand on a1 you have option to have 240 frames per second refresh rate which gives you a smoother image so this is exactly the same viewfinder but on a1 it can be smoother but on a7r5 it can be like higher quality basically and to be honest those differences are not that huge so except the screen i think the screen is the biggest like gripe here so if you bought like six thousand five hundred dollar camera last year or like a couple months ago it still uses exactly the same screen as a7r3 a couple of years ago so that, that was actually my gripe when i found out that a1 the newest flagship whatever that was released two years ago still has the same screen as my old sony cameras so now let me list stuff that a7r5 has that sony a1 doesn't have that i believe that could be updated with like the firmware update so we have af assist for video this enables you fine tuning your autofocus uh with with the ring so if you're like focusing with your autofocus you can just move the ring later on to tune it and then we have focus map for video also this fancy feature that shows like this funky colors to the determine what is in focus what is not and then we have focus breathing compensation which is huge it was introduced with a7 IV I use it all the time on my a7 IV so when I record my YouTube videos I do use lenses that that breathe and then I just enable focus briefing compensation sony a1 does not have it for some reason there's new many options as well so new video like kind of view and also like this block menu and then we also have touch shutter on a7r5 so you can touch to actually release the shutter which you can't on a1 for some reason as well and then there's animal focus in video that for me personally but some of you might find some of these features being like a 
big game changers for you or not. Either way, these seems like features that could be updated with firmware. Will this happen? It's hard to tell. Like from what I've heard from Sony engineers, there's a lot of other cameras that would be capable of like getting new features from the newer cameras. Like, but that would decrease some of the processing power in these cameras. And the only thing that they cannot do is they cannot cripple the camera in a way that it's slower than it was initially when it was released. At least that's what I've heard. So maybe they could introduce some of the new features, but they're afraid that it's going to slow down the original features of the camera. I just hope Sony A1 has enough processing power to inherit those features. So if you're watching this video after November 2022, make sure to check the comments. I pinned the comments if there was another update to Sony A1 camera. Okay, now let's move into the most important differences, the technological differences between these two cameras. So first of all, Sony A1 has stacked sensor. And a stacked sensor is a sensor type that is just way, way, way faster than a normal, regular backside illuminated sensor that you can find on A7R5. What does it mean that sensor is faster? So all the out of focus calculations, all the information, data information that you need for a video to get like 60 frames per second to get to get the speed of the camera, it all comes down to the speed of the sensor these days. So if you hear stacked sensor, it means this is like super ultra fast sensor that can do stuff that other sensors can't do. So that is why A1 have no rolling shutter, have basically no banding. So the black stripes when shooting silent shutter and also can shoot 8K 30 frames per second with no crop, can shoot 4K 120 frames per second with no crop and like all the other modes actually are available in this camera. This is a huge technological difference. So A7R5 on the other hand with its regular sensor will still have rolling shutter, will still have bending when shooting silent shutter and when using video modes they are some sort of like crippled People say it's like Cripple Hammer came and made like 4K 60 with 1.2 crop. It's not Sony limiting this camera. It's just this technology of this camera, meaning this kind of sensor with 60 megapixels isn't fast enough to transfer all that data to make these features available. So note that there's no firmware update that can come out on A7R5 to bring, I don't know, no crop or to bring, you know, faster readout. This is not possible. This is hardware limitation. But there's interesting comparison looking at the AF systems of these two cameras. So on paper, Sony A1 has more out of focus points. 759 versus 693. And also Sony A1 can calculate out of focus more times per frame than Sony A7R5. So Sony A1 can shoot 30 frames per second and can make 120 out of focus and exposure calculations per second, meaning it will recalculate focus and exposure four times per each frame, still shooting 30 frames per second. That is an insane number. A7R5, they do not provide the number like this, so we don't know how many calculations it can do per each frame, but still it shoots like three times less frames per second. So, so the number maybe is not that different. But then Sony A7R5 also has this new brain unit, AI processing unit that allows better subject recognition. So now you have the autofocus that can recognize a car, train, insect so this is different but in the real life scenario like especially for me like shooting portraits shooting people i tried both cameras and both cameras perform flawlessly so whenever you see the face in the frame both cameras will just focus on the face and they will find the eye on the face and they will lock on that face the only difference i found is that with a7r5 and its new capabilities it can recognize a person from farther away a1 would still recognize, you know, this subject from far away. You can see this different kind of box, this green box with two lines. It does mean on A1 that is tracking an object, um, while the A7R5 is tracking an object but recognizing the object as a human being. That is why there's just a new green rectangular box. So, so that is different, but still like both cameras would give me the same type of images. Both of them would just focus on that person. Then I tried it in, in the total darkness. Both cameras also performed in a very similar way, sometimes tracking the subject well, sometimes losing the subject. But then there was this one scenario that I came across. It was shooting backlit 
um, the, the human subject was my wife. And trying A1, it struggled. It does. It did struggle. I tried to pinpoint on, on, on my wife and she, she just walked through the leaves, but the A1 was just losing the subject. The face was not clear enough for A1. It just couldn't grab an eye. And then when she was moving through the leaves, it just lost her while A7R5 immediately recognized the same subject as a person and would just focus on an eye even though you cannot clearly see an eye. And then she would walk through the leaves and A7R5 would still find its way to just focus on the eye and on the face. So these are the advantages that I believe are just hardware updates with the A7R5 with that new AI processing unit. On top of that, I tried this car out of focus as well on both of the cameras. While A1 was great to just pick up the subject and just kind of follow it, um, A7R5 was better because it just could recognize it as a car. So there are these hardware limitations that A1 doesn't have and I don't believe it can be done with a firmware update maybe some of these features maybe there's enough processing power to introduce some of these new tracking modes or recognition modes on a1 i don't think it can just do it to the level that a7r5 can so like at the end of the day i would say that a7r5 has a superior out of focus than sony a1 and then i tried also the iso performance so we have 61 megapixels on a7r5 versus 50 megapixels on a1 the, and a1 has like a slightly upper hand here i would say that like the image is cleaner on a higher isos still if you would resize both images to like Instagram size, there's no visible difference that you can just tell. So both perform really great in this regards. And the last but not least, my favorite difference between these two cameras, a Sony A1 has a superior mechanical shutter. This is like this new design of mechanical shutter that allows you to sync your flash like at one 400th of a second. This is the only camera that can do it. The sound of mechanical shutter is so quiet that you can just barely need actual silent shutter with this camera. So overall answer for Magic is, if you need silent shutter, you need A1. If you need 30 frames per second, you need A1. But if you don't need any of those, you're probably gonna be better off with A7R5, which has everything that you would ever need. It has a lot of megapixels. It can shoot smaller files as well. It has superior out of focus, amazing video modes with just slight crops and slight rolling shutter. But still, it seems to be like a better overall product for the value. So now make sure you watch my other videos on Sony A7R5 and I see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.